I always loved reading when I was a kid, probably more than the drawing side of things. And when I was little, my mum says I always had my head stuck in a book and I used to rob all my brothers and sisters' library cards and head down there and get all the books out. But I'd have them read by the end of that day. So I was like mad into reading more than anything. And it was around maybe when I was around 12. It wasn't until I nearly went to secondary school and I met a friend of mine, Michelle, who was my best friend. She was brilliant at art. and She kind of really got me started on the path. When I left college, um, I would have taken my portfolio of all my artwork around to different publishers and different newspapers, um, showing them my, my portfolio. And I got a few first early commissions from the Irish Times and the Independent, I think. And also um, I did lots of rejacketing of book covers for Mercia Press and Wolfhound Press. So they would have been my first illustration projects in the real world. And from there, I went traveling actually then in Australia for a year. And while I was away, a publisher from the UK was on holidays in Dingle and she spotted one of my book covers that I had done and she got in touch with me. And I illustrated my first book, Tales of Woods and Wonder, when I was in Australia. And I have it here. Um, it's a collection of tales from all over the world. Um, including an Irish one and a Native American Indian one. And it's a lovely collection. It's retold by um, a storyteller called Hugh Lupton. And he has a lovely turn of phrase. He, you know, And you can really hear the voice of the storyteller coming out. So like, it was a lovely first book. The book would usually take me from when I write the first idea in my notebook to when I deliver the artwork, about a year. Um, and then it doesn't come out until the following year. It takes a year to design it, get it printed, get it delivered to the... Um, the booksellers. I always illustrate with children in mind so when I had my own my first child and um, my daughter Megan I illustrated and wrote my own book for Walker Books called The Ravenous Beast when I was pregnant with Megan. Um, I don't know whether it's kind of influenced me but definitely she would um, have lots to say now about kind of my books and when I'm coming up with ideas my kids are great to kind of try ideas out on so if I've written a story I'll read it to them and see what they kind of what they say or what their feedback is and they're really discerning like children will tell you if it's bad or they'll tell you if they love it as well it's very obvious. Oh, I love that is so funny. <laughs> is he? So I can learn an awful lot from watching their reactions to um, my books and to characters as well. And, and parents will know this, that a child can just, um, you know, fixate on a book so much that they'll bring it to bed with them. Uh, they'll want it read over and over again. So if the kids like them, great. But if the parents are happy too, that's good as well, because they're the ones reading it, especially when they're young. Ideas can come from lots of different places. Sometimes it can be like a little sketch that I've done. Um, say The Ravenous Beast, um, it came from an original idea. I did like a little painting um, years ago, just called Ravenous Monsters. And the idea kind of really started from there. And I brought it over to my publisher. And when we were looking through, I always keep notebooks. And when we were looking through my notebooks, um, they happened upon the little drawing of Ravenous Monsters. And it kind of started from there. And I mixed the Ravenous Monsters with the idea of the old woman who swallowed a fly. And I had the great fun coming up with all the different characters for the book. Cat and dog and all of the different sayings that they had. It was great fun. And I think out of all my books, this is probably my favourite book. Because I just think the writing is good fun and it's a great one for reading aloud at workshops. I recently did a workshop in my old school where I used to go to school in primary school um, in Swords and I read to 650 children all under the age of eight and it was amazing. For me it was the highlight of my career so far because it was like my audience was there, they were so worked up about it, they were so excited about it. So when I came up on stage to read them my books it was just brilliant and they all joined in. They all kind of shouted, now that's what I call hungry when I was reading The Ravenous Beast. And when I read the Hugglewugs book, there's a page on it where you're kind of invited to roar along with the Hugglewugs. And when the kids, the 650 kids joined in, roar! they nearly lifted the roof off the building. It was just brilliant. I have three children all under the age of six. And I guess because they're looking at me all the time, painting and drawing and writing, um, they just think it's normal. 
Um, my daughter, when I pick her up from school, she loves coming home with me and coming up to my studio, which I have converted the attic in the house, so I use that to work from. And she just, um, you know, sits down beside me and she does her own kind of stories and her own kind of pictures as well. So she just, I suppose they are kind of influenced by um, my books and and looking at my work. And But to them, it seems kind of quite normal. Am I happy? Yep. I'm in a kind of good point in my life. Um, I have three gorgeous kids and a lovely husband. I love what I do. Um, I love painting and illustrating. I love kind of life, I suppose. I try to enjoy it as much as possible, you know. And I do believe, like, you know, spending time with your kids and it just kind of gives you a kind of happy buzz anyway. Look at me. Funny. No. I said, I said, I said, I said, I said.